people I'm talking about liquid. Rich enough to have your own jet. Rich enough not to waste time. Well, in my book, you either do it right or you get eliminated. They're analysts. They don't know preferred stock from livestock, all right? The new law of evolution in corporate America seems to be survival of the unfit. Good evening, stock traders, and welcome to Stock Traders Talk Radio here on a beautiful Wednesday night, February the 29th, 2012. I am your host, STT. Joining me on tonight's program, I have Mr. Ka. Hey, how you doing, STT? I am doing well, sir. How about yourself? Great. Just absolutely great. Looking forward to this interview. That's Oops. Good. Ooh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Quiet now. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> Come on. Also joining me on the program tonight is QT Cal. Hello, STT. How are you? Doing great. How are you? I am fantastic tonight. Awesome. Just waiting to see what's going to happen later in the show. Exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. Very exciting. Also joining us on the program tonight is Stock Sumo. Well, hello. Good evening. Good evening, folks. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me back. And we have a little discussion later on, me and you. I want to talk about what you did today and how, how uh, everything worked out for you. Also joining us on the program tonight is Sifakia. Aloha, STT, and the rest of the crew. Mahalo, bra. Aloha. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Good to have you back. Two nights in a row. Two in a row. Uh oh. Good three, trend. Maybe. It's an uptrend. It's always a good thing. All right. As promised, Stock Traders Talk Radio tries to bring you the most exclusive CEO interviews possible. And we have achieved that once again tonight. Doing tonight's CEO interview is QT Cal. QT, take it away. Thanks so much, STT. Well, we're here tonight with Mr. Gordon McKay. He's the CEO of Green Energy Solutions, Inc., stock ticker symbol S-A-T-M. S is in Sam, A is in Apple, T is in Tom, M is in Mary. Mr. McKay has been doing business in the renewable green energy sector for the past seven years. Green Energy Solutions is a project developer for renewable energy projects in Canada. Welcome back to Stock Traders Talk Radio, Mr. McKay. We're so glad to have you tonight. Yeah, thank you very much, and, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. So the last time we had the pleasure of speaking with you, you went into great detail about your company. Would you mind giving our listeners a recap of some of the company's highlights and maybe some of the current business objectives that you're into? Sure, I'd love to. In fact, uh, I believe it was a month ago, exactly a month ago that uh, the last time I was on and uh it seems it was just like yesterday <laughs> this month is going by fast but yeah green energy mm-hmm. solutions um we do have a project here in canada uh just north of edmonton which will we, which we will be taking the old railroad ties from uh on track which we have a contract with to make renewable energy and one of the things that we are doing is, is uh, electricity rather than uh, liquid fuels, and we're just finding it's, a, it's the best, uh, best way of doing it up there. Great. So with that technology, um, I know that you have been getting into some exciting times here with your company, and we definitely are looking forward to hear a little bit more uh, in regards to updates on that stuff. So uh, it's very exciting. Thank you. So the next thing I know everybody's wondering, because your ticker symbol, SATM, sometimes people may scratch their head and say, hmm, interesting ticker symbol for Green Energy Solutions, Inc. And I know that you had spoken last time in regards to uh, working with FINRA on a symbol change. Can you give uh, the listeners uh, an update on that progress? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, we actually awarded the new show tomorrow. I'm sorry, Mr. McKay. 
Mr. McKay, can you hear me? Hello? I'm sorry. I think, I think oh, I'm sorry. I think we were having some connection problems. Uh-oh. Oh, oh I'm, there I'm you a... are. Okay. Okay. Why don't we oh. take it from the top? So <laughs> in regards sorry about to, the, that. to the ticker. Oh, that's okay. Uh, no problem. We'll just go through and take it from the top in regards to the update for the symbol change on your uh, on your stock. Yes. Uh, we've been working with FINRA for some time, and we've actually been awarded with the name change and symbol change which uh, we got uh, notice from them today, and hopefully we'll have the, um, the changes all tomorrow, which we'll have a news release the day that, that, that we can show that we've changed it. But instead of um, SATM, it will be Green Energy Solutions, and the ticker symbol, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe it is going to be G-E-S-I. Oh, great. So you have gotten that approval, and that should be happening very shortly then. Correct. Excellent. Excellent. Well, great update there. So now I know you've been talking a little bit about the renewable, the green renewable energy sector that you're in with the railroad ties, a lot of the uh, exciting things that are happening right now in your in your company. And previously, you had spoken in great detail of the Alberta Canada Rail type project. Can you mm -hmm. give us any updates specifically in regards to the technology portion of this project? Any new well, information? On yeah, a month ago I, I was on here and I, I was hoping to have the technology picked. And that was one of the things I promised I would. And actually I have picked out the uh, technology and it's taken, oh my gosh, a couple of years to fit to uh, pick the right technology, but it's been worthwhile. Uh, there's been several different technologies that we've we've gone through that uh, um, we've looked at with guarantees, um, uh, financing, and uh, these guys are that we've we've decided on is uh, number one. They're number one in our books, and we're going to go ahead with them. And excellent. Actually, I. Yeah, it's, and I'm really, really excited about it. And uh, we will obviously have news releases and everything else um, on that company. Great. Um, so with that technology and with the company, um, are you able to give us a little bit more information on who you've chosen and the process with that? Yeah, in fact, um, I do have the gentleman online here with me. Uh, Jason Watson, and I'd like to introduce him to you. Uh, he's he's with Inrefco. Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Hi Jason, happy to have you. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Uh, I don't know so, if you want to, um, us to explain the uh, technology or. Sure. Yeah, so, um, do you want? If you'd like to explain the partnership to us and uh, how this all came about, and um, Jason, if you can give us some more detailed information. All right. Cool. Oh, he, <laughs> anyways, how how this came about is um, I've been I've been dealing with Jason for probably I don't know how long has it been, Jason, about a year. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, pretty close to that, and. Um, you know, we've been talking about financing. Uh, he knows our, our project very well, and our feedstock is the railroad ties. And um, the whole thing about how they're being delivered to us, uh, we have a contract with uh, OnTrack. They're delivering it. They are chipping it and getting everything ready to put into the, to the technology, which, which uh, really, really saves a lot of, of costs, probably around 20%, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, just what they've done for us, and uh, the technology is um, is a is a gasification process, which Jason can elaborate on. He has more you know better idea on it. You bet. Great. Uh, I guess I will uh, I'll jump in. Uh, my company is in Refco International Renewable Energy Facilitation Company, and uh, we've been talking with. Gordon, for some time, close to a year, as he said, about what his needs are, what the feedstock is, what the opportunities are, and, and price points for electricity or fuel or different things. And 
and uh, I represent a number of technologies. And so we, we've gradually dug down into what is the best fit for that project. And uh, the technology that we're using is waste gasification or thermal oxidation waste gasification. Uh, so it is a, a thermal gasification process. Uh, gasification, for those listening that may not know anything about that, has been around for about 100 years. It's been used in a variety of different um, for a variety of different reasons, uh, and only recently, uh, in the last 15 or 20 years, has it really come to the surface and being used for uh, creating renewable energies and, and these kinds of, of topics that are so prevalent in our economy and our environment today. Um, but the, the reason why we selected that technology is because it is uh, very efficient, it's very robust, doesn't have problems, uh, limited maintenance, uh, creates, um, uh, gets the most bang for your buck, so to speak, with having high quality. So you got the efficiency factor, you've got um, environmental factors where you are eliminating 99.9 percent .9 of all combustible waste that goes through it. It can use a variety of fuel sources. In this case, the railroad ties. Uh, are a very good high BTU source of, of feedstock and consistent. Uh, this system can also take a variety of feedstocks, such as municipal solid waste, sewage sludge, auto shredder residue, medical waste, hazardous waste up to level six, uh, different types of industrial waste, C and D, um, you know, animal waste. You know, there's a, a whole variety that it can be used in. Tires is another one that's very high BTU value that can be used in this. Um, but it's a it's a very clean, efficient process that gets rid of 99.9 percent .9 of the combustible materials and provides for 100 percent recycling of all aluminum, metal, and glass in the first phase. So it aids in the the recycling process as well. Uh, in this case, we're not dealing with MSW, we're dealing with railroad ties, so it's, it's nice because you don't have peaks and valleys in your output. It's all you know, very consistent because it's the same fuel source over and over. Um, it's also got no smoke or harmful emissions. Uh, it's had years, undergone years of EPA testing and third-party testing and has uh, been very, very clean. Uh, you can't even really tell, if somebody doesn't tell you what it is, you can't tell what it is when you go up to it. There's literally no smoke, no noise, no odor, as you would experience if you were dealing with an incineration facility or something along those lines. Uh, they tend to have noise and obviously smoke because they're combusting the materials, actually burning it. In this case, we're gasifying, which is uh, the methodology behind gasification is you have a container that is airtight. You put the material in that, and uh, it's heated up to a, a certain temperature, in this case uh, around 450, 500 degrees. And then at that point, it's oxygen starved, and it works off its own BTU value, which creates higher efficiency because you're not feeding it additional fuel sources. And during that process, over an 8 to 10 hour period, the temperature continues to rise to the point of gasification where the material, instead of being burnt, it actually uh, is a chemical exchange that happens that turns the material into a syngas. And that syngas is uh, primarily made up of oxygen and hydrogen. And that syngas then goes in through a second uh, phase where it is used to power, uh, in this case, uh, high-efficiency Siemens steam turbines, which can create electricity. And typically in this process, uh, they're averaging anywhere from five to six megawatts of power, nameplate capacity, per 100 tons per day. In this case, we're considering 200 tons per day. So around uh, eight to 10 megawatts is the output that we're uh, conservatively expecting. Um, with the high BTU grade of the railroad ties and the fact that it's a consistent fuel source, um, it'll make it so that that is achieved on you know, a very regular 24-hour basis. 
and it may even may even peak a little higher than that. But that eight to ten megawatts is a is a very conservative engineering estimate for what this system should put out. And uh, as far as comparing to other types of technologies that are available and other types of gasification and also um, to converting waste to fuel, which is other option, um, this was the, the option that was selected that seemed to have the best return for the company in this given situation. Great. Um, can I ask a follow-up question, Jason? Um, is there an existing relation? Is there an existing relationship with the U.S. Department of Energy, with in uh, regards to yeah, the federal uh, energy? I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it it has been reviewed. It's been reviewed by the EPA. Um, there used to actually even be a program where the the EPA would endorse certain technologies, and they they disbanded that, I believe, in 2003. At that time, one of the the lead um, I don't know his title at the moment, but one of the the lead analysts for the the EPA and Department of Energy at that time was going to endorse this uh, equipment, this technology, and that was at the time we got a letter from him. But it's at the time they disbanded the endorsement process. But it has been uh-huh. permitted in five states. Uh, it's been tested. The first facility went in in 1996 and has been running ever since. There's been uh, six other sites that have ran over a period of years for the multiple testing that's been done. And there's several plants uh, that we're currently working on putting into production now, uh, including an 800 ton per day uh, hazardous and industrial waste facility in Ensenada, Mexico, and a 3,000 ton per day system uh, that's going to be MSW and a variety of fuel sources in Bangkok, Thailand. Wow, very interesting. Thank you for elaborating on that. It's good stuff. Yeah. So um, so uh, just for a recap for those of us that are a little, a little slow in this area, so Gordon, what you're saying is, is that there is a relationship with your company and on track? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, and so what our happens with that is, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our relationship is is with on track. Um, basically, I'll, I'll give you the background. On track has a a contract with CN Rail, Canadian National Railway, <clears throat> up here in Canada, which they get between a million and a million and a half railroad ties per year, and uh, they have a 104 acres up just north of Edmonton which uh, our contract entails that we uh, get a partial um, use of their land. They're going to deliver those railroad ties to us, ship them, and uh, give us approximately a, a, a five to seven acres of land to, to use um, for this plant. Oh, wow. So your facility is actually going to be built on the acreage that will be provided by OnTrack? Correct. That's correct. And wow. one of the reasons why we're doing that, and, and we're really lucky to, to have this, is because now we don't have to uh, build an infrastructure where uh, you have to have, you know, delivery service with these with these rail cars, which is a track, which is very very expensive. Um, mm-hmm. We're grandfathering in all their permits, and because they've been around for over 30 years doing this, and uh, they have uh, their fire um, ponds, fire trucks, and all the infrastructure that. Uh, a company would have to do from scratch would be very, very expensive. So we're very, very lucky to, uh, to get on with them, and our cost is, is uh, zero for this uh, feedstock. Again, well, Mr. McKay. Probably, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say you have to be extremely excited at this stage of your business plan and the execution and what's going on right now. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, the savings that uh, with OnTrack is, is just tremendous. I mean, it's Again, it's probably saving 20, 25% of the cost to do one of these projects uh, just with that land and, and service that OnTrack uh, is giving us. Wow. I mean, that's a really good point that you bring up because a lot of times when companies are start, the startup and the startup cost in regards to putting together something to where you're actually producing is, like you said, the cost is could be 
astronomical sometimes with all of the things that you'd have to plan for. So in essence, what you're saying is on track, they are just happy to have you, you all as, your, as their waste management uh, company that will help take this, the, the wood and, and what you're doing with the wood away because I'm sure that costs them money in their business to find ways to, um, to get rid of, of their waste, which in this case would be wood. Correct? Yeah, correct. That is so correct. Okay. In fact, with us okay. uh, coming online with them, uh, they're, they're able to go out and get bigger contracts with uh, CN and uh, get more railroad ties. Wow. So this is a perfect relationship. I mean, in essence, when you look at what their needs are in regards to your business and what you could provide for them, plus they're, they're uh, providing the chipping, they're getting everything ready for you to be able to put that into the technology to produce electricity is what you're saying. Yes, that's correct. They're, they're doing absolutely Amazing. everything for us. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, go ahead, Mr. McKay. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> sure. yeah, I don't know what um, what else can we cover. Um, I know Jason and the technology is, is uh, I'm really, really happy to announce them. Because without without the technology, uh, they provide um, financing as well, which uh, we didn't get into right. yet, and okay. uh, that's a big one. The engineering and uh, comes with full engineering, um, so on and so forth, and other technologies that I looked at uh, didn't didn't come along with financing. So it was very very hard and difficult for financing people to understand what we're doing, and it would take forever. And the other thing is uh, finding an engineering group that understands this technology and to provide us with a, a full engineering um, contract for this. That's and it, great. And so you're saying as, as far as in REFCO, the, the partnership here, uh, as far as the technology that Jason and in REFCO are giving, uh, it, it allows you to um, have those short-term and long-term goals and, and have your business off and running in regards to the production phase? Correct. Yes, they're they're going to be working with us uh, on a daily basis now, Jason. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah, I mean uh, it's it's great, and I'm I'm finally I'm really really happy to announce it that uh, we're going forward and getting this thing uh, this thing uh, online. That is fantastic. So you've got the uh, you've got on track in place for to receive the waste, then. Uh, Jason's company in REFCO, you're going to be working closely with them in regards to the thermal gasification process, which will then turn the, this feedstock into electricity or into energy. Correct. Amazing. That, that's, how, that, Amazing. that's pretty much how it works. And the, the energy that we've, uh, we're working with right now is that we're producing, uh, we're very, very close in getting a, a PPA, a power purchase agreement with um, – I'm working with two different, three actually three different companies up there, as a third-party buyer for this uh, this electricity. And wow. once we have that, um, which I should have in a week or two, that uh, we're ready to go. Wow, that's great. As far as the phase, uh, I'm, I, is it the production phase now that you're looking at? As far as the building of the plant and and allowing to get in there and and to to do what you've got to do on the land to get this up and running? Is that the next phase? Well, the next step is, next phase is, is the engineering. And mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, X amount of acres, and uh, we've got three different spots we can put it on. And the engineers got to have a look at it, which is um, it's very simple. And OnTrack is working very closely with us and are just as, as excited for us to be up there and uh, doing something. But that's our next phase is the engineering and um, putting the pieces together and, and drawing a uh, a scale, um, and then uh, that's off we go. Great. Yeah, and how long? Gonna... Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. Go ahead. Oh, if you don't mind, I just interject real quick. We're gonna we're gonna kind of be multitasking. There's certain things that have to go one step before the other, but it's also kind of a chicken and egg situation. For instance. Mm -hmm. Uh, you need to have funding in order to go forward, but you need to have a PPA in order to secure the funding in many cases. 
uh, so that you have that end product sold. Uh, we've got to have the engineering so that we can get the the finalized um, purchase contract for the equipment and get that all into play, which is also required by the, the funding to know what that draw schedule is going to be and that end, end amount is going to be. So there's a, there's a few things we'll be working on. But this program, the way that, that we do things, is pretty much turnkey. Um, the engineers will will work on, on developing everything, putting the, the project together, the pricing together, and the entire system will be built at the manufacturing facility, tested to be operational, uh, underwritten by the um, performance warranty company, and then disassembled and shipped to the site and reassembled. So it'll be ready for commissioning instantly once it's there in place. Great. And about how much uh, of a time frame are we talking about in regards to the engineering aspect of this and what you just described? Uh, the engineering aspect will be pretty fast, actually. Um, the majority of these things uh, are cookie cutter in terms of the equipment itself. The, the main considerations will be where it's going to be sitting on the side, what the access points are to uh, the electric distri distribution and to the feedstock, and uh, then, of course, we'll have to begin the permitting process and see what, what we're going to have to go through in that side of things. Um, but uh, it's a relatively straightforward process. We've got a huge international EPC company that does all the bonding and all the construction, uh, a very well-known international manufacturing company that does all the building, and uh, it's just a very solid, robust team. Excellent. Well, it sounds like everything's falling into place and is on its way. Very nice. Thank yeah. you for the additional information. <laughs> yeah, we're, so we're totally, Rick totally excited. Oh. No, no, that's okay. Go go ahead. No, I just I was just saying I'm totally, totally excited. And um, we'll have news releases on step by step, and, and hopefully we'll be back on the show in a couple of weeks and explain well, how. Well, that, how... that was going to be my next question. Oh, <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. <laughs> as far as uh, what's what's uh, what major event is on the horizon that we could have you back on the show? Yeah, I think the next steps. I mean, once we get them uh, um, completed, uh, as uh, as we talk here, we can go on in a couple of weeks and uh, you know explain how much further we got got along here and and uh, what's needed next. Our next steps. Well, that's great. I mean, the the, the whole. The, the, the nice thing about this interview, as far as the follow-up, is that you have found um, a great partnership there with uh, Inrevco and that you're going through the thermal gasification process. That's the process that you've chosen. And so it must feel good to have all of those pieces now coming into place. Yes, definitely. I'm, I'm really, really excited. I'm excited for the whole team of uh, Green Energy Solutions that's uh, put this thing together. It's taken a lot of us and a lot of man hours, but uh, we're we're getting closer every day. Excellent, excellent. And um, just from a uh, a look into the future, I know you'd mentioned this previously on our on our last uh, interview. In regards to your grant funding, once this plant gets up and running, can you also explain to the audience in regards to the uh, the type of grant money that you would be getting if you had. I remember you saying something in regards to the the production the production plant and the size of it in regards sure. to having funding. Would you like to cover that yeah. again for some of our newer audience members? Sure. We've we've actually received a few uh, government grants from Alberta Energy um, this thus far, and and they want to see us get this uh, project up and running. So what they've done, they put a program together. It's a um, it's a program. If if we do a 10 megawatt plant, this is an example um, that we will receive 5.2 million dollars for four years up until up until 2016. And what that does is, um, so if we do a five megawatt plant, we'll get two and a half million. That's how we're. It's on a scale, and, and a 10 megawatt is about right for 5.2. We've worked it out. Because that's uh, probably what we'll end up doing is around 10 to 12 megawatts, I believe. So yes, the government yeah. is uh, is really excited. In fact, I talked to them just the other day again, and um, I wanted to see how far we're along, and and they're excited. And I talk to them probably every uh, couple of weeks, 
And uh, I mean, we're we're in a, a grant right now, and we have to follow up with our milestones on a quarterly basis, which we do, and and uh, it's, it's working out very well. That's great. Now, in, as far as the 10 meg- megawatt plant, would that also fall in line with the production of 200 tons that you were talking about earlier? The Correct. Production? Yes. Uh, okay. Right. Yes. Great. Well, it's nice to know that also that you're, the the government is 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 looking into these renewable energy uh, sectors and that they're really wanting to push that. That's a that must be a very good feeling for you and your business as well. Yeah. Yes, it is. In fact, they have a great program with uh, Alberta Energy on doing renewable energies. That's what their uh, this program is strictly for is renewable energies of all different sorts. And um, I know they're really liking ours and and they they're following us. You know, step by step as well. Excellent, and excellent. And I just want to let all the listeners listeners know that from this process that you've started, you've selected um, you've selected the type of feedstock that you're using, which is which is the old railroad ties, which come to you from on track. They're providing Correct. the chipping. They're also providing the land, and there's virtually no cost when it comes from a logistics standpoint of getting that material to you because you will be on that land, correct? Yes, that's, that's correct. I Amazing. mean, the contract has, has a, a contract with CN to pick up their old railroad right. ties, and uh, and uh, they do and take them back to the yard. In fact, the last time I was there, there was, I believe there was four or 500,000 railroad ties in their yard, and it was uh, quite, a, quite a, a pile. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that's that's also good for uh, for business longevity for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, right. It, it, you know, it's just it's really interesting as far as coming from a shareholder perspective, or for someone who's just listening for the first time. That really, I mean, to have this type of partnership with On Track, it it really allows you to just focus on the production side or or getting that part of your business up and running. And with the assistance from the Canadian government on top of that, I mean, it just, it sounds like for, for what you're into in the business that you're, that you all are pursuing, it just seems to, to, to look to be, all the pieces are fitting together very nicely. Yes. I, in fact, I, I don't know how anyone could do it without the contract that we have with uh, on track. I mean, the cost uh, mm-hmm. just to have uh, your land and everything else is in the several million dollars. So to do that from a startup is is a, a huge cost. And uh, because it's already there, we grandfather in their, all their permits. They're, uh, they're in the industrial park area. There's um, – um, to get into the grid, we don't have to do a transfer station. It's right there, and it, it would handle 10, 12 megawatts very easily. So the the whole thing is is worked out perfect with OnTrack. Wow, that is it, that's amazing. I I can see this where maybe your your biggest uh, concern in the next few years would be how much more do you have to ramp up in your facility once it's up and running. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, we we can do that as well. That's always a good problem to have, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, is there anything that we have? Heard so far, Mr. McKay, that you would like to yeah. share with the audience in regards to the upcoming events? Yeah, I, I, I was just going to ask Jason if there's anything that uh, he wants to add that we we might have missed. Uh, the only thing that comes to mind is uh, very often I'm asked the question on uh, capability in terms of size and scalability, and with this technology, uh, it's very scalable, scalable down uh, as low as. 10 tons per day or up to thousands of tons per day. Uh, it's all in individual cylinders that are uh, put together in such a way that um, it's very easy to scale up. Very that's, nice. That's a good, that's a good point. Uh, as Jason, we've I've always thought of crawling before we walk here, and uh, 200 tons is is uh, is a good good start if we. This thing, once it gets up and operating, there's no problem to put another 50 tons on or even a 100-ton modular um, add-on to it and uh, so on. And that's one of the reasons why we, we put the 200 tons. It's uh, Let's get it up and operating and crawl before we walk here and get this thing rolling. Excellent. Well, thank you. And um, 
I just want to make sure that we've covered everything that you'd like to speak or talk about tonight in regards with the latest updates. Ah, uh, yes, I've I've uh, covered everything from from our name change, symbol change, which will be any day. Hopefully, it's tomorrow, and I'm really looking ex for, excited for that. I mean, that's that's going to be a, a big deal, uh, as as you, as you mentioned. You know, a company's called Satmax, and it has nothing to do with green energy solutions. So now it will. It would make sense when you go to a symbol, GESI instead of uh, SATM. I'm sure that'll be a very good change for you, and it'll be much more uh, recognizable for those who are looking to invest in your company. So that's great. Yes, and thank very you again, and, and I and I hope to uh, be on there very very shortly. Great. We're, well, we look forward to having you back, Mr. McKay. So anytime, you know, I mean, we're, we'll be looking, we'll be looking to to get you back on with any any updates that you'd like to give us in the near future. Great. Yeah, All right, again. and thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason, yeah. for coming on and explaining the thermal gasification process. Very interesting. It's great uh, to see that the process is now put in place to where you can move forward with uh, with the next phase of your business. So we look forward to talking with you in the near future. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Thanks, thanks again, guys. guys. All right. Appreciate All right. It. Thanks, Amy. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right. That was Mr. Gordon McKay. He's the CEO of Green Energy Solutions, Inc., and I have a feeling that we will be hearing a lot from them in the near future. Very well done, Ms. QT. Thank you, Mike. A little nervous. Really good. L little really? nervous? A little nervous or what? Uh, you know, I mean, look, you always got to break in, you know, and the first time is always nerve-wracking. But, uh, you know, hopefully I held it together. It was <laughs> oh, the great. boss. You did great. <laughs> good job. The, uh, Excellent. Thanks, you know, guys. the thing about it, too, that's, uh, you know, there's a lot of hard stuff when you start getting the technology pieces of that. And and you could tell here here's the thing you, you could tell there's some there's some pauses on their and on their part and and it, this took me a couple of years to learn is I thought that I thought that you know they just either forgot what they were saying or something like that you got to remember when when they're in the in these phases of their business right mm -hmm. um, everybody and their brother wants to know stuff about their businesses the revenue streams all kinds of crazy stuff well they have a legal team that's behind them. That you know that when they're doing negotiations, they're doing. I mean, because they they just just came to be. I mean, they just announced this thing of what they're getting ready to do, and there's pieces to it that they're not. They don't want to tell anybody. You, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So yeah. when when that when you're when you're hearing those pauses, I will guarantee you they're checking. Okay, I can say that. I can't say this. I can say that. I can say that. That's what that's what they're doing. And I know it gets, it's kind of gets like it's one of those. Uh, you feel like you should talk, but that's really what's happening. <laughs> and it took me a while to actually learn that. And, uh, the, uh, so, no, you did, you did great. That was really, well, really good. Thank you. You know, the, on this end, too, it's like the curiosity always comes into play. So, you know, you just keep asking more questions and you keep digging. And, uh, you know, and it's not with the intent to, to try to get them to, to get in trouble or anything. But, you know, on this end, you're and, – and I'm sure from a shareholder's perspective, of course, they, they want to know the ins and outs of the company. But it sounded to me like they – are really taking it to that next level, and uh, you know the engineering piece looks like it's going to be happening happening here in in the present, and we'll see how the production piece comes into play later. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a shareholder or a potential investor, and I'll just be honest with you, I heard two things from that interview. Yeah, I mean, you know that that I would sit there and go, okay, they they just got the technology that's going to make huge revenue, and they got the ticker change. That that's the two things that that be focusing on, and the fact is, those are big, big, big events. I mean, that's like that's like milestone events for, you know, especially when you trade stocks. And I'm not telling anybody to go trade stock. I'm simply saying that that's a uh, they know exactly how big of an announcement that stuff was. Yeah, you know what's what also is interesting because coming from I have a, a manufacturing background, um, and what. What a lot of people don't realize is that companies pay tons of money to get waste or to get their um, their waste out of their yard. So I could see where this is a really good partnership between uh, Mr. McKay's company and also this on-track contract because it sounds to me like they need to dispose of this, and they found 
them to be the ideal waste management handler because of the of of the way that it would benefit both. But of course, from a profitable standpoint, Mr. McKay's company, it sounds like all those puzzle all those pieces of the puzzle puzzle are coming together and so that makes it that much more of a of probably an enjoyable partnership. So very interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great job. Thanks. Okay. That was a fantastic interview. Hopefully everybody enjoyed that one. We're going to take a small commercial break, and we'll be back with the top ten buzzing on Investors Hub. Does that sound about right? Is that what we're doing next? I don't even know. Sounds right. Is it right? Okay, good. Commercial. We'll be right back. Where we outweigh the competition, pushing and shoving our way to extreme profit in the penny stock arena. Go to StockSumo.com today to sign up for our free alerts via email or text message. StockSumo.com, where the games are groundbreaking. Don't just take our word for it. Find out firsthand by heading over to StockSumo.com, home of the real heavy hitters. And now, a quick word from ThePennyBin.com. What does one penny say to the other penny? Let's get together and make some sense. Are you tired of losing your hard-earned pennies? Be sure to visit ThePennyBin.com and download our iPhone app where delivery of our stock plays right into your iPhone instantly. The time to start making money is now. Please be advised that you may make huge sums of money and that ThePennyBin.com will not be held liable. Traders Talk Radio. I'm your host, STT. Join me on tonight's program. I have Cop, Stock Sumo, Sifakia, and QT Cal. Did everybody make it back to the show with me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, That's a good thing because I don't know what I would talk about if nobody was here. <laughs> I'd be in a little trouble. <laughs> Just a tiny little trouble. Just a little bit. All right, as promised before the commercial break, I promised the top 10 buzzing on Investors Hub. Doing tonight's top 10 is Stock Sumo. Sumo, All right. go. Well, for those of you who didn't listen to last night's show, you missed out on some really good, good stuff on the medical marijuana buzz. Boy, there's six plays that are buzzing uh, in the medical marijuana field. And out of those six plays today, uh, like 80% of them did well. There was one that didn't do very, very good. And I'm going to start that one out um, just because I'll, I'll give you the bad first because I like to always get the bad first and then get the good later. So I'm going to give you the, the crap at the beginning here. RFMK. The good thing about it was it did trade 27 million shares. That's over the average volume. The three-month average volume is 15.2 million shares. It was down 19.64%. The other medical marijuana play that had a nice little gain today was MJNA. That closed at 072 it was up 9.2 percent but if you go pull up a daily chart on this thing you look at the first hour this thing had a steady incline to 11 cents out of the gate it screamed and 
it traded some big, big volume. A lot of these stocks were trading big volume today. CBIS hit a high of 24.5. These things have been up days in a row. Yesterday, we came into this mix midway through the run, and I, I don't know if it's going to top out, but you've got to follow these plays religiously because when they come down and bottom, that's when you're going to want to accumulate again because I'm not suggesting you go in now because they've been up so high over the past couple of days, and they've just been taking wicked runs, and the momentum is just carried on, and today you saw that transition into more gains. Uh, hemp, that's another one, H-E-M-P. It opened up at 0175 after closing at 017 yesterday, and it hit a high of like five cents, trading 5.6 million shares. The three-month average is only 154,000 shares. Okay, closed at 026, up 52%. GRNH, that's the other one that had a nice little gain, closed up 10% at 027. It hit a high of three cents, traded 609,000 shares. ERBB, ooh, this was a screamer. Opened up at 065, hit 0117 at the high of day, up 43% at the close at 0093, traded 22 million in volume. The three month average, 3.3 million. Okay, let's move on. To the next on the buzz cloud we're going to talk about coho and this was a stock traders talk uh stock and spotlight let's go back to the 31st of january what's that a month ago so yeah. back then we talked about the stock at 0011 and <laughs> cop did one of his classic moves told it how it was and I mean, you guys, you got to go listen to that show. I'm not even going to say anything else. Go listen to the 31st of January show and um, just listen to how he called it. Um, it. Needless to say, the stock saw a low of triple oh five after that. Today was up as high as double oh two two. So that would have been a three bagger. Okay, you're not going to time these things right. You're not going to be able to get in at the bottoms and sell the tops. So let's call it a two a two bagger. Let's say you get in at 001 and sell it at 002. Okay? Or or if you get in at 001 and sell it at at 0015, that's still 50%. Um in within the, the past month today it traded 69.9 million shares. 3 month average volume is uh 15.9 million shares. All right. Well, I'm not going to, you know, preach about buying or, or selling stocks because I can't do that. I'm not licensed and neither is anybody else from STT. We're not licensed uh, financial advisors, so we can't give buy, hell, uh, sell, or hold strategies. I'm just sharing my insight and uh, going over some, some of these uh, top buzzing stocks. So uh, that's what I got for you today. Nice job there, uh, Sumo. The, uh, you know you're right about that, and it's you know the irony too when you uh, when you guys did your 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 stocks and focus last night. You know you nailed a whole bunch of them. I mean that CBIS was quite amazing actually. I mean that thing ripped out of the gate from that point zero one point one eight, and just went all the way up to uh, I think it was point two five if I remember correctly, uh, and then it just did it did a steep. I mean it looked like a damn mountain on the chart. And then it recovered, and then did the sideways thing. But the volume, 116 million, on, on, on a you know on a you know in the, in the 18 cent range, that's ridiculous. I mean that's just amazing. That was like a lot. That was like a lot of them though. Same same with hemp. That that, that did the same thing. And and uh, and uh, uh, the other one there, uh, ERBB. Yeah. What is the catalyst behind this right now? Because we've we've talked about this on previous shows where. If you watch a sector, especially the, the uh, medical marijuana sector, that uh, once one starts moving, they usually all follow in suit because, you know. Uh, well, that's what, that's what the catalyst is right there. You just asked yourself a question and answered it in the same sentence. Because, uh, you know, this only happens once in a while. And 
luckily enough, we're keen to pick up on it and we call it during it. So if we, if we notice a certain trend, if we notice a certain, you know, certain group, like usually like uh, the, the last week I was talking about ethanol stocks. Um, I, in the past, one, one ethanol stock runs, a bunch of them run. And that, and that goes the same with these types of stocks. And it, and it only happens once in a while, but if you notice one running, look at the rest in the same sector and chances are, um, they could they could catch on if the if the volume is picking up, and I think CBIS sparked it off. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's exactly what happened. I mean, there's you know there's always some news in different states trying to do something and all that. You know, especially in California. I mean, they, they sure. they're pretty much getting that down to a science. You know, you know, and when you and you re, when you really think about it, the you know, and you and you tie the government to to that. Right now, marijuana is all over the nation in in many many fashions and all over the place. Uh, but it's all you know black market illegal type stuff, right? You want to talk about a revenue tax stream for the the government? Holy cow! <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, right? I mean, when you think about it, uh, you know, it's, you know, especially if they if they just keep the focus on the medical side to it. You're, I mean, there's some there's some serious amount of uh, deficit reduction that can happen just from that. Oh yeah, well, everybody, gonna, everybody, everybody out there real. has glaucoma. <laughs> I I always like to see these stocks that make these huge gains, and I'm just going to look for a pullback and watch for the dust to settle, and then once I see some consolidation, um, and some you know sideways action, then then chances are there's going to be a rebound after that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. My, Good stuff, Matt. My my point with the uh, cannabis was more to the point of that they're not in competition with each other, most of the ones that he just read off. They actually provide services to each other. One right, a, a lot of them, they're in their own little area. <clears throat> they do their own thing. We're going to go through this again when interrupt me every time I talk? <laughs> Are we going to go through it again? Because <laughs> I will disconnect you. <laughs> you are testing my last nerve tonight right now. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the host upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, finish what you were saying there, SPT. He, I have no clue what I was saying now. I forget everything. I hey, well, about medical I, marijuana and how they work with right, each well, other. And since stuff. you're derailed, I have a question for you. Go ahead. The, uh, Dr. Bob, have, mm-hmm. have we reached him? I uh, spoke to IR today. And I'm waiting to uh, hear back on that. And what which which company this is, if I remember correctly? CBIS. That's right, Doctor Bob Melamed. That's right. Now, we've interviewed him what twice before? Two or three times. And what was the price of his stock back then? Oh, penny, two pennies. I think so too. <laughs> I think so too. Every time we interview him, the uh, not that it's us, but the uh, each time it's he's in a new range. I don't want to take. I don't want to take anything away, especially because we had a CEO interview tonight, but Dr. Bob is an original. That's for sure. Uh, that one night we, we interviewed him for what, two hours? Yeah. Yeah. That was, well, you know, cause he wanted to do the, uh, the marijuana round table. Oh yeah. Remember that? Yep. <laughs> That's pretty wonderful. He came up with an idea of he wanted every single company to be on it. And it was a, that was a very strange thing. And you're right. The, uh, it, you know, this isn't about uh, about that. It's about the, uh, you know, the, you know, Saddam is a is a big deal in in what they're doing. And I gotta tell you, I want to go there. I want to. Yeah. I mean, you know, because something's happening here, and I don't know if you guys are realizing this. And this is a first for uh, for our in the history of our radio show, and in, in all of the time we've been doing interviews for the last uh, three years, we have a CEO that's walking us through. The steps of a, of his business plan events mm-hmm. to generate revenue. That I mean, that's pretty significant because in most cases, you you you're, you're getting real. You you know, you, they, a press release is done. You know, then there's an interview, and then there's it's quiet for like six months, and then there's another PR or something crazy like that. And you know, you know, this guy is is basically you know open arms saying, hey, you know, I'm going to keep coming back. And I'm, I'm going to let you know throughout the entire thing. I mean, you want to talk about transparency. I mean, that's amazing. Right. Yeah, that's very good. 
and you know we're the beneficiaries of it, which is great. And, I mean, I know the shareholders are probably pretty excited about that, but I am really excited about that. Yeah. Huge. A lot nice. of good stuff. A lot of good stuff with that company, for sure. Let's set them. And we should be expecting him back in two to three weeks to give us more updates. So it's yep. nice. Exciting. I mean, to be a shareholder there, you can't complain. He's out here. He's talking to you. Uh, you know, what was it? A month exactly. Yeah. From, from the last yeah. time we interviewed him. So, and he said to you know, a couple of weeks he'll be back on. So, look forward to that. A uh, couple of weeks down the line here, middle of March, should have him back on. Uh, sorry about the connection problems earlier in the uh, interview. Uh, we have no control over that, unfortunately. Uh, Amy, you, you handled that real well. Thank you. I hopefully you only get better. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, no, it's a tough uh, spot to be in the first question you ask, and, and we're getting nothing back. It, it, it's a little awkward. Yeah, yeah. The the, drolling I, with the punches, right? <laughs> yep. I think they were walking around with their phone. I think so. That's yeah. what that is. When when somebody's on a cell phone, if they you know, they walk around and they get to a dead spot and, or something of that form. That's when that happens. Because mm-hmm. if you noticed, he was talking, but it was like quiet, as if like the phone was a little away from his, you know, from the mouth. And then you know, then when you tell him you can't hear him, next thing you know, he's perfectly clear. Right. It doesn't normally yeah. work like that if there's a technical problem. Right. 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 Yeah. So yeah, luckily it all came together okay. <laughs> oh yeah, good good stuff. All right, you're listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. Don't forget, we air Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sunday, we air at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week, we start the STT Morning Show. We will be airing from 9 a.m. till at least 10 a.m., maybe 11, depending on how busy the day is. And we'll try and keep you updated during that show of all the press releases coming out, what's running, where we see the tickers going, and and doing our best to help you out. So hopefully you find that enjoyable. That's starting Monday. The host of that show, for a Monday show, will be just me, myself, and I. But taking over the hosting seat, and he can interrupt whoever the heck he wants then, because then he's the host, Stop Sumo. Boom, and I'll, I'll I'll let you come on my show, and you can interrupt me all you want. No. <laughs> I have a little what's called radio etiquette. And just see what? <laughs> oh my gosh! Etiquette. Hey, sometimes I get a little excited, you know, and and, uh, and it and it takes away on its own. It's like a, it's like a it's like a wheelie. It just keeps going, and you know, it's like a wind up toy. You know, you wind it up, and then. Boom. Keep keep doing it because I think it makes great radio. I'd I like think, to see you guys brawl on the radio. Why don't you I, guys I, just start cussing each other? How cool would that fight, be? Fight, fight, fight. I do it. I think we need a name change for him. <laughs> name change to uh, The Rambler. Hey, easy. easy. Lay it out, <laughs> Spike. The Rambler. <laughs> I mean, my God. My Could you ramble any more? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, my. I doubt it personally. I personally doubt that the rambling could exceed what he does already. But I think he's really know. good personally. I think you threw him off at the end there. Yep, I, I think you actually derailed him, Mike. Yeah. Well, I had, I had to put him in his Again. place. I, well, you know, look, <laughs> I'm the one that has to keep the show moving. Okay, and if I'm not keeping the show moving, I'm getting interrupted. And I can't move the show along. We have no show. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, sure. Okay. You're, you're therefore, a referee, Mike. Therefore, I am numero uno, the head honcho. <laughs> and when it can comes in. Some, can we get some sound bites once in a while, boss? <laughs> we did a CEO interview tonight. Well, I mean, after it. Cop, you better hear send a big us. applause for Amy. Oh, no. I was thinking we're like, Cop needs to turn that scepter over to, to Mike. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Sophie. You rocked it. Aw, yeah. thanks. All right. You guys all do. You guys do good good work. Group hug. Group hug. If I could find uh, what I'm looking for, I would do it, but I can't find what I'm looking for. How about oh. that apple? How about that apple, huh? Ooh. you got to be kidding me. Who the hell told us to buy that piece of shit? 
Hey. <laughs> 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 Oh my God! <laughs> so now you're recording snip- snippets. Oh, oh yeah. The rambling. Oh, come on. All right, now he's disconnected. <laughs> Sounds like you're in a tunnel. Is that what? Is what <laughs> happened? What was he doing? He's playing music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that was Dumo? Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can't. You can't. You can't give him. You know, I can't wait to see what happens next week. <laughs> Their oh. morning show is going to be pretty funny, though. I know it is. Oh god, it's going to be insane and be, fun. Yep, and p- pure, pure uncensored. Oh yeah, going to be getting calls from everybody. You guys cannot be saying that. <laughs> oh. All righty. Chance to speak. Sip, do you want to add anything to the show tonight? No, I'm good. I'm going to save it for Monday morning. Are you sure? Yep. Okay, okay. TVIX. There we go. That's all I got to say. TVIX. Yeah. All right. So at least we heard from Sippy tonight. A hello and a TVIX. It's always good to hear from you, brother. Uh-huh. We'll get you on tomorrow night. All right. Full 20 minutes. Just to you. <laughs> I can't wait. Make it happen, sir. Don't worry. I have the controls to boot everybody. It could just be me and you, pal. Whoa. That's right. Our own radio show. I think Mike's been hand, been, been around is, his equipment. Is the show over yet? He's still going. <laughs> I think he's been around his equipment too much Hello. <laughs> the last week. Hello. That's true. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Okay. We want to thank everybody for listening to tonight's show. We hope you enjoyed it. Very informative, I think. Don't forget, we air tomorrow again at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with yet another Stock Spotlight. Should be interesting to see what we come up with tomorrow. Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Monday, 8, I'm sorry, Monday, 9 a.m. And also 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. From all of us here at Stock Traders Talk Radio, to all of you out there in Stock Traders Talk Radio land, we're wishing you the best in all your trades, and may your portfolio always be green. This is Stock Traders Talk Radio, and we are out. Hello. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio. All views and topics talked about on Stock Traders Talk Radio is solely for entertainment purposes. We are not professional financial advisors and always recommend you seek the advice of a professional financial advisor. Never invest in any stock featured on our show unless you can afford to lose your entire investment. The information contained on our show is based on sources which we believe to be reliable but is not guaranteed by us as being accurate and might not be a complete statement or summary of the available data. Stock Traders Talk Radio advises that the investments in companies profiled are commonly considered to be high risk and use of the information provided is at the investor's sole risk. Thank you for listening to Stock Traders Talk Radio.